polynomial functions and their graphs, part two. So we have looked at the end behavior of polynomial functions and their graphs, and now we're going to find out how they act at the x-axis. And so we're going to look for these, we call them zeros or x-intercepts. So if f is a polynomial function, then the values of x for which f of x equals 0 are called the zeros of f. There are several terms that are used for these. So zeros, they're called roots. They're also called solutions. And they are the x-intercepts. So each real root of the polynomial function appears as an x-intercept of the graph of the polynomial. To find the zeros of a function, we factor the function and set each factor equal to zero and solve. Another term to look at here, and that is multiplicity. Multiplicity of a zero. This is the degree of the factor. So we factored it to solve, and we want to look at the degree of the factor. Uh, this is important because it tells us what happens at the zeros. Uh, if we have an even multiplicity, the graph touches and turns at the x-axis or bounces. So it's going to touch and turn around. Right? If it has an odd multiplicity, so if the factor occurs one time or three times, the graph will cross the x-axis. So even multiplicity of a factor, it will touch there and turn or bounce. Um, if it has odd multiplicity of the factor, then it will cross the x-axis. Regardless of the multiplicity, the graph flattens out near the zeros of multiplicity greater than 1. Now, we're going to look at a problem. So we're going to look at a function. Um, we're setting it equal to 0, so we're going to factor it and find our zeros, and then we're going to tell the multiplicity and how it behaves at those. So this is four terms. We're going to factor it by grouping. And so we have x squared times x plus 8. And this one will take out a negative 9 times x. And we took the negative out. So that will leave plus 8. You can double check there. Negative 9x minus 72. These match. So that is our common binomial. So we're just factoring by grouping. And we have left x squared minus 9. And what you have to watch out is that this will still factor, and so that gives us x plus 3, x minus 3. So these are our factors. We set each one equal to 0 to solve. So x plus 8 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. And so x is negative 8, x is negative 3, and x is positive 3. These are our zeros. So negative 8, negative 3, and positive 3. Now, with these factors, each of these only occurred one time. This occurred one time. This occurred one time. One time. So our multiplicity on each one is 1. This is odd, so it is going to cross the axis at all of these zeros. So let's just put it all together that we have so far. All right, we know the end behavior of this graph because of the degree. Uh, the degree is 3. That is odd, which would look like a cube graph. Leading coefficient is positive, so it's going to look like this, right? And these points, because they all occur once, it's going to cross the x-axis at those. Now, this is not necessarily to scale, but there's one, two, three places where it's going to cross 
the x-axis. This next one is already factored for us. Um, so we can get the zeros off. So we said 0 equal to these. So 0 equals negative 4 times x plus a half squared times x minus 5 cubed. Right, and you're not going to get a solution from this constant. From this one, x is going to equal negative 1 half. From this one, x will equal positive 5. But let's look at multiplicity here. So let me put the zeros, negative 1 half and positive 5. Right, negative 1 half, you're looking at the exponent here. That tells you your multiplicity. So that 0 occurs 2 times. That is even, so it's going to come up to the x-axis, but it's not going to cross. It's going to turn around. So it's going to touch it. This one is odd. The degree is 3 of that factor, or the multiplicity of that factor is 3. Odd, so it will cross at that zero. Uh, if this was all multiplied out, it would be a fifth degree polynomial function, which is odd, with a negative leading coefficient, so an upside down cube. So something like this. Now not to scale, but just to give you an idea. And this would be like the negative one half where it's going to touch. And this would be like the five where it's going to cross because of the multiplicities. So at an even one, it's going to turn around. And at um, with an odd multiplicity, it will cross. So let's look at this function and answer the questions. Uh, so first question is about the end behavior. All right, this is a fourth degree, so it is even. It has a negative leading coefficient. So it is going to look like an M, upside down. All right, uh, next we want to find the zeros. So we're going to factor, so we're going to set it equal to zero and factor, and I'm going to take the negative 1 out. So I have x to the fourth minus 36x squared. I could have taken the x squared out there. Um, so we'll just do that. And that leaves x squared minus 36. Uh, difference is squares. Right, and uh, this one is going to give us zero. If you set that equal to zero and solve, it's going to give you zero. So, and its multiplicity is two. This one, it's x equals negative six and x equals positive six. Right, so our x intercepts are um, x equals zero x equals negative 6, and x equals positive 6. The 0 has multiplicity 2, so it will not cross there. It will touch and turn around. These two have multiplicity 1, so it's going to cross. Right, next, find the y-intercept by computing f of 0. If we plug 0 in, it's going to give us 0. Zero plus 0 is 0. So 0, 0 is our y-intercept. Our next question, I didn't put it on the screen, but um, it was whether there is any symmetry. Uh, when it's an even function, it is symmetric around 
the y-axis. So this graph is going to be symmetric around the y-axis. So it's going to go down. It's going to look the same as it on the left as it does on the right. Uh, so let's put some points on there. We have 0, 0. We're going to touch there and turn around. So it's going to go back up and back up like this. And we had already decided it's going to look like an M. All right, at negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's going to cross. So it's going to go like that. At positive 6, it's going to cross. So something like that. And we don't really know how high this goes up. So these, to have a really good graph, we would need a point in between these two. Uh, but this is a good sketch to know your end behavior and your zeros and how it behaves at those. Um, and it could go higher or lower in between. The next example is from our software. And uh, it says our graph here is a complete graph. That is, it is continuous and displays the function's end behaviors. Um, all the zeros are integers. And so they want us to answer the following questions. Um, on our scale, remember this is x, and it's important to know our tick marks are each one. And so we want to pick the zeros. And so we have three zeros showing. This does actually go below. So this is negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So we have a negative 4. I'm going to just put all the zeros first. And we have 3 and 5. For each of these, it crosses. So it's crossing, it's crossing, it's crossing. Um, so the multiplicity is odd. So let's look at the other questions. Uh, what is the value of the negative 0? And that's how my math lab asks you for those. So our negative 0 is negative 4. And that's what you would type in that box. And it says, is the multiplicity of this 0 even or odd? It is odd. What is the value of the largest 0 would be 5. Is this multiplicity even or odd? It is odd. And what is the value of the other 0? It is 3. And it is also odd. The next problem says write an equation expressed as a product of factors of the polynomial that the graph might represent. Use a leading coefficient of 1 or negative 1 and make the degree as small as possible. So that means for each of these zeros, we only want them to occur one time. So their multiplicity be, will be 1 instead of some other odd number. So. Um, and the leading coefficient is 1 or negative 1. So we will have, um, and let's decide which it will be. It goes up like a cube, so that means the leading coefficient is going to be positive 1, which we could write or not. To have a negative 4 for a 0, our factor would be x plus 4. To have 3 for a 0, we would have x minus 3. And to have 5 for a 0, we would have x minus 5. And I think that would be a sufficient answer. You wouldn't have to show the 1. Um, they ask us something else here. They ask us about the y-intercept of the graph. And so the y-intercept is when x equals 0. And on your graph, it is this point right here. Now, these tick marks are each 10 because of the y-axis. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, maybe 60. It's hard to tell there from that picture. Uh, so 60. Now, I took this uh, y-intercept off the graph. If we try to find that y-intercept from our equation here, that means plug 0 into the x. So if I plug 0 in here, 
and 0 in here and 0 in here, I get 4 times 3 is ne 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 times a negative 5 is a positive 60 and that actually is what I uh, took off visually. So that part's free but just um, another way to look at it.